Multimedia and interactivity have become this thing that every storyteller that I know wants to conquer, right? There are editors who are hiring tech-savvy journalists. There are um, documentary funders who are throwing heaps and heaps of cash at something called transmedia, clickable and scrollable, moving images, really. And even corporations want to get in on multi-platform storytelling. And this general frenzy to be part of this online storytelling revolution comes with this multi-directional enthusiasm, right? <laughs> people want a chart, people want an infographic, they come up to me and they're like, do something funny with the numbers. And as long as things are shiny and technological, sometimes they blink as well, people are really, really happy with what they get. And here's the problem with that. Oftentimes, people really don't know why they want these things. And that can yield some pretty mediocre results. Let's look at this graphic, for example. How prison works. Do you know how prison works looking at this? Because I don't. Um, <laughs> so this is an acceptably designed kind of graphic. There is a pair of handcuffs that teleports me straight to the scene, right into prison. But then you look at it, it looks like a pie chart. The percentages don't really add up, and this is not really about how prison works. <laughs> it's more about how uh, likely people are to go back to prison once, uh, depending on what crime they've committed. And so this is kind of a hot mess of a graphic. And a lot of people might also call it, in my field, a polished piece of turd. <laughs> But, <laughs> so the reason why a lot of these stories fail to connect with the audience, right? They fail to communicate a story is because a lot of people that I know will rush to picking a technology and a medium before they even think about what they want to say. In other words, the best creative technologists that I know, they will distill a story into a very simple concept before they even think about writing a line of code or turning on the camera. And the other people, they just get sucked into worshiping idols. They get sucked into the cult of shiny technology. And so, I want to talk to you about three main examples that might exemplify how picking a story first can be much better for, than picking a medium for the story. I used to work for Planet Money, which is a podcast and a radio show that tells complicated and dry economic issues in surprising and quirky ways. Except I was the girl who did everything but radio. <laughs> um, I did infographics, I made props for a live show at some point, I made videos. And we wanted to tackle the story about how the US became this economic powerhouse on, an, on a global stage. And we wanted to look at it through technological innovation and manufacturing. That sounds really boring, doesn't it? <laughs> but in other words, really, We, as a nation, became much better at making a ton of stuff with robots and machines and thereby freed up labor, freed up people to go and be nurses, doctors, CEOs of companies or inventors in that sense. And we wanted to tell this economic story that we boiled down to a very simple concept through a potato chip factory. This is from Hearst Potato Chips Factory in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. And we looked at the different technologies that were out there on display. And one of the most amazing apparatuses that we found there was this machine that created this tube of packaging through which carefully weighed portions of potato chips fell, one at a time. And at the bottom, there were these metal clamps that would heat seal the packaging like this and produce these perfect little packages of potato chips, the ones that you give your kids when you go out, right? Um, and how do you tell the story? This is what we did. Isn't it so much more powerful and mesmerizing to see this than to hear me jabber on and on about it? This is video at its best, showing you, not telling you, and what's even better to encapsulate an infinitely repetitive motion, an infinitely repetitive process, than to use the infinitely repetitive animated GIF to tell the story. The next example I want to bring to you is one that hopefully exemplifies how you can combine various media to tell a story. There's not always a precedent for the medium and the format that you want to use to tell the story. And so there was this company in Berkeley, California. They're called Pitch Interactive, and they wanted to tell the story of drone strikes. 
Basically, the 21st century has seen、um, the U.S. move further and further away from human warfare, and closer and closer to using robots and machines to wage our wars. And the problem with that is that. There are no witnesses to really tell you about these stories, right? There are no cameras to record what's happening. There are no soldiers to report back the stories of the people who died. And it's still such an incredible and important story because the numbers are going up of people who died of drone strikes. There's no oversight, and we're using them more and more. So how do you tell this story, which is essentially? A very dry number story, but actually about human beings. Well, done well. An interactive graphic or a graphic like this, a data visualization, gives you an instantaneous understanding of a larger issue. Right? You look at these lines, each one representing a drone attack, and you can see how that just accelerated over time. But what's missing here is really the element of chronology, of time, again, of things accelerating. And what the storytellers decided to do was to combine a data visualization with animation, the moving image. So here is a lovely illustration of how three different media, design, interactive chart, and animation, came together to bend to the story's will and tell, tell the story in the best way possible. Right? And what's even better is that this medium tells the story in a way that no other medium really could. For example, someone who has 30 seconds of time might look at this graphic and get one layer of understanding, and they get an instantaneous understanding of how the、um, the use of drone strikes has increased over time. Someone who has maybe three minutes will be able to look at the animation and get more from it, and get an understanding of how the historical context led to more and more drone strikes. And then the person who has maybe 30 minutes, they will be able to explore each individual attack and see. Who died? How many people died? How many children died? How many civilians died? Right? And so, through interaction, what you do with this graphic is you discover more and more layers to the story. You you get sucked in by the very first thing, the larger graphic. Then you get more and more understandings through the historical context. And then, in the end, if you really want to, you can really delve deep into it. And the last example that I want to talk to you about. Hopefully, shows you how laid-back and hands-off interactive storytelling can be without losing its emotional power. Not everything has to be shiny to be powerful. And so, I want to talk about a story that the makers of This American Life,、um, a radio show about the surprising stories of ordinary citizens,、um, uh, did, and it's one of my favorite multimedia examples. They found the stories of Iraqis who were trying to help Americans during the war, and thereby endangered their own lives, and are now trying to get out of Iraq. They are applying for asylum and refugee status, and they found the story of this guy, and they called him Oma just to protect his identity, and they found his emails, and they started with the email. For his application to the International Organization of Migration, and these are all of the different papers that he submitted to make his case. And then the story unravels. There's a back and forth between him and that organization. He submits papers; they want more. He submits papers; they want more. And this drags on and on and on until this email pops out. And this is his brother-in-law saying. Because of your delays, my brother was murdered a week ago at the hands of an unknown group. And so, what the story essentially is, is Oma's journey. There's a beginning and a middle and an end to his journey. These are just raw documents that the storytellers decided to curate, to put together for you to experience it. Design and technology were merely a tool for them to lay it out. And that really should come as no surprise, because technology has really never defied the creative spirit of the storyteller. 
It was always her tool, never her starting point, from the simple pencil to the electronic mouse. And so, I urge you all, the next time you work with someone like me, to ask yourself over and over and over again what your story is, and not ask yourself what technology can do for you.